All right, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about the late pattern for October. So from October 15th until the end of October, I did one like this for the end of September and then also for the beginning of October. So we're going to be doing that once again, going over the temperature anomalies, precipitation anomalies as well. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. We're looking at our teleconnections first off, according to the GFS ensemble model and you can see this is our arctic oscillation now this one for a cold in the united states basically you want this one to be negative and you can see it's basically going to stay negative from the 15th all the way until the 31st of october you can see that it pretty clearly that green line is the mean average of all of the ensemble members which all you need to know is basically an ensemble model is a combination of many many models that have slight differences so that green line means that's the average and you can see the average stays below that black line that blocks black solid line right up against that uh, zero uh, mark on the value of this so we are looking at a negative AO the whole way through according to the GFS ensemble model now let's take a look at your NAO here and you can see our NAO is a pretty similar story we see this one like to stay negative on that green line as well it likes to stay below and actually around the 20th until about the 25th it gets pretty close to average and then it goes back down pretty far below average once again for that late last I guess week of October there from the 25th until the 31st so things are looking to be pretty negative right now for a while then go pretty close to neutral and then negative once again on this. The NAO is the North Atlantic Oscillation and we want this one to be negative for below average temperatures in the Eastern United States. And if it's positive, that leans a little bit more towards positive temperatures in the Eastern United States. Now, last but not least is our PNA. And this one's actually for the Western United States. I've talked quite a bit about this one as well. We look for this one to be positive for cold in the East or really, we look for this one to be positive for warmer temperatures in the West and negative for war or colder temperatures in the West. So if, when this one goes negative, we see a lot of colder and more wet conditions for the Western United States. And when this one goes positive, we see warmer and drier conditions out in the West. And what this really does is when this goes positive, it blocks that cold air to where it's forced to go to the Eastern United States. So when a, neg when a positive PNA, which is Pacific North American Oscillation, is co combined with a negative NAO. That's very, very, uh, a very, very good sign that we will have colder than normal conditions in the eastern United States. And you can see after the 25th, that looks to be the case. So now let's look at our temperature anomalies day by day. Now that you know what we're kind of expecting as far as teleconnections are concerned, the teleconnections look very, very favorable after about the 25th. And before the 20th, they look pretty favorable as well. So it looks like there will be a little bit of a warmer period there in between the 20th and the 25th, according to the teleconnections. Now let's take it day by day. This is Tuesday, October 15th. So this is today. You can see there's below normal temperatures for all of the northern United States. And really the southern and central United States look to be the warmest here, as well as the immediate New England coast there. So this looks very similar to what my October forecast was. Let's move on a day, though to Wednesday, October 16th, and you can see we have below normal temperatures entering the central United States or a trough there entering the central United States and then a big ridge starting to appear there for the western United States as well as the eastern United States. But New England will be below average temperatures for this day. That again is Wednesday, October 16th. Now Thursday, October 17th, we see that colder than normal conditions entering the eastern United States and the warmer conditions entering the western United States for the most part. Still, the southeast immediate coast and New England is still above average temperatures. But with the exception of that, the eastern United States is below average temperatures. Now, Friday, October 18th, you can see it's a pretty similar story, except we have a ridge building in the central United States moving further and further east. But the immediate west coast is in pretty much the western United States as well as the Pacific Northwest is below average temperatures here on Friday. And then for the eastern United States, east of the Mississippi and a little bit there just to the southwest of the Mississippi, we do have below normal temperatures still. Saturday, October 19th, very, very similar story. Cold in the west, cold in the east, warm in the central. 
But by Sunday, October 20th, we do have still colder than normal conditions in the West, particularly the Pacific Northwest. But those warmer than normal conditions are moving further and further east. Remember, we were talking about a switch up in the pattern around the 20th that makes it look very, very unfavorable for cold in the east and very favorable for cold in the west. So we're seeing that switch starting to happen here on the 20th where that warm is headed further and further east. Now, Monday, October 21st, and you can see the warm is fully engulfed the entire eastern United States, and that cold is starting to really enter the western United States. Again, that pattern switch for that five-day block in between the 20th and 25th was evident on the teleconnections, and it's coming true here on the model, the GFS model run here. We see that switch happening. Now, Tuesday, October 22nd, we see that warm starting to move further and further east, and the cold is kind of entering more of the central United States rather than the very, very far western regions. So we'll have to see how this plays out over the next few days. Wednesday, October 23rd, and you can see the cold is finally arriving back in the eastern United States for the most part, right over the east central United States, so some of those Gulf states and some of the Great Lakes states as well, with the exception of some of the east coast regions as well as New England those areas are still warm, but most of the western United States is also quite warm by this time frame. Thursday, October 24th, not necessarily as cold as, cold as we've seen it, but it is cold in the eastern United States as a whole. We do have a little bit of a warm area, I would say, in the central United States up through the Great Lakes. This will probably be very, very short-lived, though, but north of there, we do have below-average temperatures for the north central United States. Now, by Friday, October 25th, the cold has fully entered the eastern United States with the Great Lakes and the east coast being below normal temperatures. There is some isolated regions of warmth there along the east coast, but that's no big deal. Uh, we, for the most part, have very cold temperatures for the east and very warm temperatures for the west. And by Saturday, October 26th, you can see it's a very, very similar story, but we do have that another cold blast moving in through the Dakotas and Minnesota and Wisconsin. We're going to see this one move further south and east and enter the east coast once again. By the 27th, this is Sunday, October 27th, we see really cold temperatures enter the Great Lakes and the northeast and kind of the central eastern regions of the United States. So we're seeing this consistent troughing moving into the eastern United States, particularly the northeast. We see this over and over and over again moving in after this point. So again, after the 25th, it looks very favorable. We're already the 27th, so we're, we've seen this favorable phase set in. And again, the PNA was set to switch to a positive phase. And look out west. Very, very warm temperatures there for the entire western United States. So we do see that positive PNA completely take over on the GFS model. Very, very interesting stuff going on. Monday, October 28th, very, very similar story. We see those colder than normal temperatures just sitting in the northeastern United States and eastern United States as a whole, and the warm temperatures holding in the western United States as a whole. Tuesday, October 29th, it looks like we have a little bit of a trough that's moving out now. It's, it's heading further and further east, and the ridge is moving a little bit west, or sorry, the ridge is moving a little bit east, and we even see the southeast being taken over by a little bit warmer than normal temperatures there, so we'll have to see what happens. Wednesday, October 30th, and you can see a little bit more cold building up there in the north central United States. When we have a negative AO and a negative NAO, this looks to persistently happen, and the northeast and mid-Atlantic is still below normal temperatures, but the southeast is starting to get warmer and warmer, but by the 31st, we have our next trough moving in, another big one moving in for the northeastern and north central United States. And I'm assuming probably after this frame, we see that move even into the Gulf states. This is pretty far out though, so attention to detail isn't very important here. It's more just the overall trend of what's happening, but that's day by day. Let's look at our GEFS, which is your GFS Ensemble Model 5-Day Increment Forecast. So this is going to be a little bit more normalized, a little bit more accurate in the long range. So from the 15th through the 20th, this is our pattern. We have a little bit of cold there for the northwest and kind of west coast there, as well as the north central. So the entire north is pretty much below normal, but we have a little bit of cold making its way to the west coast and the east coast of the United States from the 15th through the 20th. Again, there is a big, big pattern switch that happens from the 20th through the 25th, so let's take a look at that. Uh, we see the warm temperatures re-enter the eastern United States, similar to what we've had in months past. And there's some warmth there for the southwest as well, but really cold for the northwest, north central, and south central United States from the 21st through the 26th. 
But after this point, from the 26th through the 31st, again, we have another huge pattern switch take place after the 25th, and we see cold enter the entire eastern United States, big-time troughing consistently. This would be big-time, oh, borderline winter-type pattern, and I see signs that if this does take place, we could see the Great Lakes start to produce snow and even start to see snow like clipper systems for the north central United States and the northeastern United States. Some isolated regions up there could potentially start to deal with more and more snow as we head into later October. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I will continue to make these early November, late November, early, early December, late December videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Share it with your friends and family if you do think they will enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.